This is Mr. Bloom with Academic Geometry at Paytel High School with this week's homework. Assignment 3C having to do with squares. All right, we've got a rhombus here. And we've got some items that we know. We know that RK is 5 right here. We know RY is 13. Something else we know about this, these diagonal lines on a rhombus is that these diagonal lines are perpendicular to each other and they create 90 degree angles. Also with a rhombus, they intersect each other. Okay? So that this diagonal intersects this diagonal and vice versa. So we've got congruent parts of our diagonals. So that means if this is 5, this down here is also 5. Okay? So let's pull this out. We've got a right angle here. And we know that this segment's 5. And this is RY. This is 13. And this is K. All right, so I'm just going to say that this is B here because we have a strategy for this we've talked about, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, so let's plug in what we know. Well, A I'm going to put as 5. So 5 squared plus B squared is what we don't know equals C squared, my hypotenuse, which is 13 squared. So let's square it. So this is 25 plus B squared equals 169. So I'm going to subtract and solve for B now. So I'm subtracting 25. And so I get B squared equals 144. Okay, so I do this exponent. I've got to take the square root of both sides. So B squared equals 144, I take the square root of both sides, and what that does is it takes care of this, this exponent here. And so I just have b. Well, the square root of 144, that's a perfect square. That's 12. So that is my ky. It's 12. Next. So what we did, we solved this right triangle. And what we did, we solved it, and we got whole numbers. 5, 12, and 13. Well, these are called Pythagorean triples. And these are whole numbers that solve this equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Another example would be 3, 4, and 5 is also a Pythagorean triple. Okay? So, let's do the next one. PK. PK here is right down here. Well, we just solved for KY KY is 12, and these are congruent. Uh, these are diagonals that have been bisect have bisected each other. So if this is 12, this side is 12 right here. So PK is also 12. So now look at the measure of angle YKZ. YKZ. Well, look at that. These are di this is my diagonal, and these diagonals are perpendicular to each other, and they form right angles, which is 90 degrees. Angle PZR, PZR. So that's this angle right here. That's this angle. Well, we're told that YZR, YRZ, I mean, that this angle is 67. And when we have a rhombus, we have parallel sides, parallel opposite sides. When we have that, RZ turns into a transversal. So now look, we've got two angles that are alternate of the and transversal and interior angles. So if this is 67 right here, angle PZR is also 67 degrees. All right, let's do number five. Angle APQ, APQ, this angle. So we have a square, and we know a square has four 90-degree angles. 
Well, our diagonals bisect that angle. They bisect this angle so that this side is congruent to this angle right here. So it's the to they add up to, to 90. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 90 and split it in half, divided by 2. And so this angle measures going to be 45 degrees. Angle MNP, MNP. Well, this is this angle, and this is a square. So this is a 90 degree angle. So this is equal to 90 degrees. NAP. NAP is this angle right here. Well, I just said that these diagonals are perpendicular lines, and perpendicular lines make for a 90 degree angle. But we want, they want us to find the value of x here. So if the measure of angle NAP is 90, and we want to find what x is, we've got this part, 90 degrees, equal to this part, 9x minus 9. So that's our strategy. 9x minus 9 equals 90. So now we have a two-step equation to solve for x. So I'm going to add 9. I'm going to add 9. I get 9x equals 99. Divide by 9. Divide by 9. We have x equals 11. Next, number 8. Number 8, we've got PM is 4x minus 12, and NQ is 2x minus 10. Well, let's look at this. PM is this diagonal. And Q is this diagonal. On a square, we have these diagonals are congruent to each other. So MQ is congruent to MP. So this part is equal to this part. So part equals part. So that's a strategy. Let's set them equal to each other. 4x minus 12 equals 2x plus 10. We're going to solve for x. So subtract 2x. Subtract 2x we get 2x minus 12 equals 10. Now I'm going to add 12. I'm going to add 12. So I get 2x equals 22. My last step, I'm dividing by 2. Dividing by 2. I get x equals 11. I also get x equal 11 there. Let's do number 9. So the edges of my window, I have these vertices. All right? And they want us to determine whether the window is a square or a rhombus. Well, first thing, we got to figure out whether these are even a parallelogram. And so to do that, let's figure out slope. So I'm going to, this is my purple opposite sides, and this is the other opposite sides. We're going to figure out whether they are parallel to each other just by counting boxes. So 2, 4, 5. This is a run of 5, 2, 4, 6 up. So this is a positive 6 fifths slope. This one is 2, 4, 6 up, and 5 over, it looks like. So this is also a 6 fifths slope. So we have these opposite sides parallel to each other. The other one, we've got to count here 2, 4, 5. We have 5 there, and then we've got a drop of 2, 4, 6, negative 6. So this is a negative 6 fifths. This one, 2, 4, 6, a drop of 6, and 2, 4, 5, a run of 5. So this is also a negative 6 fifths. So we have opposite sides that are parallel. So we definitely have a parallelogram. Okay. So now, is this parallelogram a square or is it a rhombus? So to determine whether it's a square, now we've got to figure out if our diagonals are congruent, OK? If, it's not, if they're not congruent, then it's a rhombus. Well, let's take a look. Let's draw my diagonals. There's one, and here's the other one. And they're right on our, on our grid, so we can just count them. So 2, 4, 6, 8. 10 wide. This is 10 wide. And let's see how far down this is. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is 12 down. So we do not have congruent diagonals. Okay? So 
we do not have a square. What we have here is a rhombus because we have diagonals that are congruent. All right, let's go to the back. Check this again. Two, four, six. Yep. Two, four. Yep. That's, that's, that's a rhombus. All right. This one. This one next. We've got two diagonals that bisect each other. Well, if we look at our grid, our diagonals bisect each other, and that is. one of the conditions for a parallelogram, all right? So we don't know anything else about these other than the diagonals bisecting each other. So this is simply a parallelogram. This one, well, we have diagonals that bisect each other, which is great, so it's a parallelogram. But we have a perpendicular diagonals. Okay, so this is right here. Diagonals are perpendicular is a condition of the rhombus. All right? For it to be a square, we have to have one of the properties of a rectangle to work. And so we either have to have four right angles or diagonals that are congruent. Well, we do not have diagonals that are congruent. We just have this 90 degree perpendicular diagonal. So this is a rhombus because the diagonals are perpendicular. And this one, we have uh, diagonals that bisect each other. Okay, next one, number 12. Well, we have angles that are opposite, that are, per, that are congruent, and we have these pairs of opposite angles also congruent. Well, that is one of my definition of a parallelogram, that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Okay, that's all we have. That's all we have. So this is a parallelogram. Next one, we have four congruent angles. All right? Well, if we have four congruent angles, this total angle measures 360. And 360 divided by four tells me that each one of these angles measures is 90 degrees. So this tells me that this has to be a rectangle because a rectangle has four right angles. I mean, and we technically have pairs of opposite angles that are congruent. They just happen to be <coughs> all four congruent. So this is a rectangle, all right? Next one, let's graph this. So this is B is 1, 3. This is B. E is 7, negative 3. F is 1, negative 9. And G is negative 5, negative 3. All right, let's connect these. Negative five, two, four, five, negative three. Okay, this doesn't look like anything right here. This one right, E, two, four, six, seven, one, two, three, yep, one, negative nine. This looks kind of goofy. 
one, three. All right, let's just, let's just draw this. This doesn't look right, but let's see. My g is right. g is negative five, two, four, five. And yeah, let's just draw it. Let's just draw this. This looks a little stretched out. Oh, that's negative three. That's what it is. This is one, three. My b is messed up. This is b. So, all right, that looks that looks better. So, never mind about this one. Never mind about this b. I made a mistake. This was one positive one three, and I did negative one three. So let's take a look at this. Well, we have to figure out whether this is a parallelogram. So let's do that by counting boxes. Two, four, six down. Two, four, six over. So this is six over six. This is negative one. Over here. Two, four, six over. Two, four, six down. Negative six. This is negative six over six. And this is negative one, two. So we have opposite sides that are parallel. Well, it's telling me it is a parallelogram, but I'm just figuring out the slope anyways. Because there's another thing we can tie to slope. Here, 2, 4, 6, and 6 up, 2, 4, 6. So this is a positive 1. This is 2, 4, 6 up, and 2, 4, 6 over. So this is a positive 1. So these opposite sides are also parallel. Well, what I did here is I created a right triangle. Each one of these triangles are 6 by 6. That tells me that these hypotenuses are all the same length. So let me draw this out. So each of my rise and run was 6, my legs. And so that tells me that this hypotenuse is the same. In fact, if we solve for this hypotenuse, we can put it into the Pythagorean theorem. These are my legs, 6 and 6. 